tell y'all how we're going to do this. We're going. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set a calendar for tomorrow. And then we're going to go into those people who have not been here to ask for these 50 idiotic bills. <laughs> because this is a first. We've done like one bill like this, Paul. Be real brief. There will not be a calendar set for the supplement supplementary the, cal the supplementary calendar will not be set this morning it will be set later on this afternoon and it will be a matter of how much time that you want to spend in this building today so don't Hey, leave me alone after this morning. All right. Setting the calendar for tomorrow. Senate bill, and this is under modified open. Senate Bill 128. Do I hear move? Any any opposition? It's on. Under modified open, Senate Bill 23. Do I hear move? Any opposition? All right. Believe it or not, that is your calendar. There's not a lot that have gotten over here. We've been trying to do our business, not the Senate's. Mr. Chairman, I move that Senate Bill 213 be returned to Ag and Consumer Affairs. You got to move to send the SB 213 back to committee, House Committee. Any opposition? Uh, it's done. All right. Mr. Coomer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, procedurally, this will be a bill for the supplemental. Do you want me to go ahead and ask for that now or yes. come back later? Okay. Uh, this is on page three under modified structured House Bill 1052, about a third of the way down the page, creating the offense of second degree murder uh, in cases of second degree cruelty to children that results in a death of a child. Are there any questions of Mr. Coomer? Good bill, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm I'm sorry. Where's Mr. McCall? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was trying to hide behind Chairman Martin there. Uh, this is House Bill 983. It's a rewrite or fixing of the gate program in Georgia. Uh, Leader O'Neill and Chairman Chanel and myself and all the ag groups have worked hard on it, and Brandy especially. Uh, there's a fiscal note that says that uh, revenues will be unaffected if we pass it. If we don't pass it, revenues will take a downturn. Uh, so all it is is tightening it up, and, and uh, it'll be short if I got anything to do with it. You know I trust you to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Short. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I have uh, two propositions today. The first, uh, HB 819, it's on the second page in the modified structure, about halfway down the page. Um, this bill works in the area where uh, 
tax liens are sold. It has a technical change in Section 1 that was left over before. But essentially, this is about taxpayer protection so that more due diligence has to be uh, completed before tax sales are made to third parties. It also gets rid of a, a sort of an archaic uh, system where a single individual can actually get paid for not doing their job. If a tax assessor doesn't collect the taxes and then sells them to a third party, um, there's a provision in Georgia law whereby they get 50 cents. And I think we've got, we're in 2014 here, we don't need to be rewarding anyone, especially a single individual, for not doing their job. So I would uh, ask the chairs uh, and the committee's indulgence to get that on the supplemental calendar when uh, the chair so sets and answer any questions about that bill. Next bill. I just had a quick question. Were the tax commissioners and banking industry, are they good with this bill? Yes, ma'am. I think the lady for the question, yeah, that, that's a good question. The due diligence portion only um, affects right now uh, one uh, group because they're the only people that sells. We went out of their way, worked with Dan Ray, uh, Richard Royal to make sure we didn't affect folks that were not selling these liens, so they're completely unaffected. The banking community has some language in that uh, they've been trying to work with Chairman Willer for a number of years on the super lien process, again, to make it more fair for the taxpayer in the event that the, uh, a mistake is made and taxes aren't paid to, to let people redeem their property and pay their taxes and get right with their local government. Thank you. Good job. Mr. Chairman, if it, it please the, the committee, I have also House Bill 257. Uh, this bill is uh, to sunset the uh, alternate vehicle uh, low and zero emission tax credit. Um, there's been a lot of information that came around about it this weekend. I just want to take a second that that it does have a fiscal impact on the on the state of Georgia if we don't do something about this. Um, the information that says it hasn't cost anything. Um, Which does, not, I've lost. I'm sorry, I, I failed to tell you. It's a structured proposition, the third item on page three, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. House Bill 257. Basically, there exists a situation where in Georgia, a zero emission of vehicle gets a $5,000 tax credit. There's no limitation to it. There's no cap. Even the federal program has a cap and a sunset date. Uh, so we look to sunset this April 1st. Um, for the committee's edification, uh, even the people that are advocating in favor of this point out that over a thousand of these vehicles have been sold. Uh, in fact, 1,120 have had their request for the certification of the credit just this year in the first uh, uh, month and 25 days of February. That's $5.5 million in tax credits that the state has incurred this program. I think it, it was a good program and got the uh, industry started, but the industry should be able to stand on its own at this point. And I'd respectfully request the committee put that on the floor so that we could look after the taxpayers' dollars. Answer any questions. Thank you. Mr. Knight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm bringing before you House Bill 291. This is a bill that is moving the State Board of Accountancy from the Secretary of State uh, up under the uh, authority and control of the State Accounting Office, where we've got a CPA as the director uh, of the State Accounting Office, understands our profession. Um, it is very important. There's a lot of hard work been going on in this bill. Um, currently, Georgia ranks last in the nation as far as our state board of accountancy and it's a crying shame with the state uh, number one in business that our accounting profession uh, uh, is, is is looking at that from a state board perspective so that mr. chairman I'll answer any questions no questions thank you mr. Atwood thank you mr. chairman ladies and gentlemen of the committee I bring before you House Bill 933, it's at the bottom of page three under the structured rules. An exemption on sales and use taxes on aviation parts has been in effect since uh, initially passed by the legislature back in 2007. It's been extended by the legislature and the governor three times. It's set to expire July 1st of 2015. And this bill removes the sunset provision. That's all it does. In 2009 and 2010, 
the special counsel on tax reform and fairness reviewed all uh, tax incentives, and as most of you know, they recommended that uh, uh, several be eliminated, but the council recommended that the exemption for aviation parts be made permanent, and also the governor's initiative uh, said the same thing. That's all this bill does. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield for any questions, if there are any. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Donahue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. I come to you with HB 779, which is on the second page, modified structure rule. What this bill basically does is a renewal permit carry license, and it's for veterans. What it basically does is each county in the state of Georgia, several have the opportunity where they charge a zero fee by choice. There are certain counties that charge $7 for the cost of the card, and $30 is a maximum charge they can charge. The breakdown is $22 required by the state, $1 that goes to probate court judge retirement, and $7 for the card to get the total figure of $30. Questions? Thank you. Wait a sec. Ms. Abrams. Thank you. Actually, Mr. Dunhill. I'm sorry? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there an actual cost to certain counties that uh, my concern is that counties like um, Columbus, Muskogee, Liberty, with heavy populations, there's actually an administrative cost to providing these licenses. Is there a fiscal note on the impact of these counties? Because if we're going to mandate it, what does it do to those counties that have heavy populations of military? They're each one the commissioners are to take under charge the price, and that price is $30 cost. That is all in. $30 is for the personnel that's sitting behind the desk, which breaks down to $22, $1 for the probate court judge, and 7 for the card. So that's a $30 charge. So, so my question, thank you. My question is, do we know what the actual cost will be to the counties that have these heavy populations? Because you're essentially going to be removing their ability to collect these fees, but they're still going to have to provide the service. Well, and I did call, and I do have a list I'd be glad to show you of pretty much about 50 calls to each county, and almost every one of them was either zero, seven, or they charge somewhere around $30 to begin with. But it gives them the choice to opt in at the top dollar. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Powell. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Um, two quick requests. Um, House Bill 707 under modified structure, second page, asking for um, the Georgia Health Care Freedom Act to be put on the supplemental. Also, right under that is House Bill 771. That is the to extend the uh, statute of limitations out to 10 years beyond the age of 18 on child sexual abuse cases in civil actions. Um, and it extends the statute of limitations out to five years on third party vicarious liability cases. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll take those now. Ms. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a question on the second bill. It looks good, but I was curious how do other states treat this? Um, there are five states that have no limitations. They have removed the statute of limitation on civil actions for child sex uh, abuse cases. There are other case, um, states like Connecticut, they go out to 30 years. Um, some of them, like Florida, uh, has actually removed the statute of limitation on child sex cases, sex abuse cases and civil actions. So we are not, we would not be uh, an outlier there. We would actually be in, in company with some others, but this particular bill in committee, we moved it out to 10 years. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Mr. Nimmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I want to come this morning and ask for your consideration on the calendar today, House Bill 958, located on page four, all the way at the back of your list. Which 
Which one? 958. Okay. Any questions? You, you want to explain it? <laughs> I can. I was trying to be short, sir. Yeah, I think since, we've, a, ne since we've never heard of this thing, you know, you might all say a little something about it. Yes, sir. It's a uh, tax bill dealing with the qualified gaming industry, the sales tax holiday uh, for back to school sales tax exemptions, and then also the energy efficient uh, appliance holiday, sales tax holiday as well as food banks and the projects of regional significance. All these programs have been in effect. They've all sunset, and we seek to reinstate those in the state of Georgia. Thank you. Mr. Barr. Good morning. I have a modified structure, third page, top of the third page. Uh, this is a Delegate Recall Act. It gives the sole power to elect and recall the delegates to uh, Article 5 convention to our bodies. Gives it to who? It get, to, the, to the legislature, sir. Both the House and the Senate. 930. 930. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Barr? Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mayo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I bring before you on the third page under structured rule, House Bill 390. This bill would allow an exemption for DeKalb County to the sales tax ceiling. And currently, DeKalb is restricted by a MARTA tax and a host tax. And we have serious transportation infrastructure needs that this bill would help address. It would allow the county to put up for referendum a SPLOST for voters to make a decision about a 1% sales tax for the purpose of funding transportation, transportation infrastructure. And I ask for your favorable consideration and will yield for any questions. No questions, thank you. Mr. Strickland. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I have two bills to present today. First one's House Bill 883 on the first page, about halfway down. <clears throat> this bill is a Commissioner Department of Banking and Finance bill to correct some cross-references in our Merchant Acquire Limited Purpose Bank Act we passed a couple years ago at Chairman Earhart, carried a couple years ago. And also on the second page, our modified structured rule about three quarters of the way down, House Bill 845. This deals with the public disclosure of arrest images. It's another mugshot bill to go after these websites that are charging for removal of mugshots right now. Folks that never had um, a case even brought, um, actually, so the mugshots put online, they're charging for the removal of those images. What? 845, the second one. Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can you tell me, last year we passed uh, a bill by Representative Bruce. That's right. What is the difference between his bill and your bill? His bill actually made it illegal for the websites to do what they're doing right now. Um, the problem is a lot of these websites went and moved overseas, and we're having trouble actually enforcing that law. So my bill gets to the supply of the images overall. I've worked with the Sheriff's Association, with Gactel, and with PAC as well to draft a bill that would um, limit Basically, it requires that uh, media go and request in writing the images from sheriffs. It keeps sheriffs from actually posting every single image they have online, which is where a lot of these companies are actually getting them from. No more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. 
I come today uh, requesting two bills. Uh, on the second page, second from the bottom, House Bill 913 uh, recognizes a conflict of interest uh, with the Department of Community Health for individuals who sit on that board uh, while also receiving coming to the board for licenses. Uh, listen to your concerns. I have uh, made some exceptions for those individuals who are licensed medical professionals so that they would uh, be exempt from that. And then on the third Wait page. Wait a second. Any questions? No questions. Next one. And then on the third page, again, under modified structured House Bill 1078, uh, which looks to correct some problems that we've had uh, as a result of the Jury uh, Composition Reform Act passed in 2011. Uh, right now, there are several uh, places in the code where it wasn't clear if you were talking about grand jurors or trial jurors. And so we're cleaning that up and then also uh, taking some steps to make sure that uh, when they go to impanel the grand jury that they have enough uh, members there to choose from. We've got two amendments on that bill. You'd like to go through those? Uh, the, the first one uh, dealt with some language on the first page where uh, we referenced uh, trial uh, jurors, um, uh, trial jurors, grand jurors, or other uh, jurors. Uh, and it was unclear what, or excuse me, trial juries, grand juries, or other. Uh, and so we were trying to. Uh, we're going to strike the other. Uh, couldn't find really any reason why I'm, uh, to include that. We going back looking at it again. Trial and grand would cover it. Uh, the the second amendment I would actually uh, ask to, to pull back uh, right now. Uh, we're working on some language. There is an issue there that, that we need to look at, but would like to pull back on the second amendment, which is Mr. amendment Mr. number. Mr. Kelly, the only way. These are modified structure, and the only way that you can have an amendment done to this bill is through this committee. If you pull back too far right now, it will not be amended on the floor of the House. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, then, uh, then the amendment uh, 29 2292, uh, the second amendment, uh, would delete some language that says, after consulting with the district attorney, uh, talking about a judge, um, about a judge going to um, trying to impanel uh, the correct number of grand jurors. A lot of times now we've had a situation where there's uh, they have to impanel between 16 and 23, and when they've got there, uh, they end up having a lot of people that conflict out. So that was a problem we were trying to address there. The language was a, was a little broad, and that was the, uh, the, the need for the amendment. Mr. Kelly, just a quick question on the amendments on 2292 and 2293. Mm -hmm. Is the gentleman's intention to pull one of them now, or would the gentleman like the discretion to have the Rules Committee act on them now for consideration on the floor, and then as discussions go on, the gentleman would have the option on the floor to withdraw it if, if that were the case? It's the gentleman's. That the, have the committee act on now, and then the discretion to pull them on the floor. Mr. Roberts. Just a question, Mr. Chairman, um, and, and I'm just trying to make sure as far as we follow the procedures, isn't it correct that someone has to offer these on the committee? Yes. Okay. Mr. Setzler? Okay. Any other? All right. All right. On, on your desk, you should have two amendments, AM 29-2293, the first one he offered. Uh, do I hear a motion? Any opposition? 
Okay. The other one is AM 292292. Do I hear a move? Any opposition? All right. Both of those can be voted on on the floor if your bill makes it to the su supplemental calendar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Williamson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I come before you today to ask for your consideration under modified structure. Top of page three, third bill down, House Bill 982. This bill is a Department of Banking and Finance um, requested bill that would modernize the uh, licensing and language uh, under the money service businesses that are regulated by the Department of Banking and Finance. Those businesses include uh, check selling, money transmitting, and ca check cashing. Be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Park, Mr. Parson, that's thank you, Mr. Kelly. I'm Mick Williamson. Bye. I'll take the compliment, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Parsons. <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen of the uh, Rules Committee, I have House Bill 348 I'd like to ask you to put on the calendar today. Uh, this is a bill that creates a uh, tax credit for the purchase of commercial vehicles that use alternative fuel. I worked uh, extensively with the governor's office on this this, this year, uh, made changes for them. Uh, they have no problem, the governor's office has no problem with this bill. Worked with the Chairman Chanel on it, made changes that he's requested. Uh, the, it wouldn't go in effect until fiscal year 2016. It would only be for 2016 and 2017, uh, two and a half million dollars a year for a total of five million dollars. Uh, it's a good bill that would incentivize the use of some alternative fuels and uh, would also help clean up the atmosphere, help with uh, children with asthma and different, uh, different issues relating to uh, clean air. And I would request uh, that you uh, put this on the calendar. No questions, thank you. Mr. Harbin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I have two bills I'd like to request this morning. The first one is under modified open, House Bill 876. I requested this one the other day. This is a uh, simple bill. It takes five constitutional boards and sets them under the same per diem allowance as the General Assembly. Uh, and then it was, uh, the bill was amended in committee by Chairman Powell to say that anyone who serves on a board must be present at the board meeting, physically present at the board meeting in order to receive their per diem. So those are the two things that House Bill 876 does. Next one. Next one is under the structured rule. It is House Bill 922. And this just creates a uh, tax credit for those physicians that help to train the residents to help, to, uh, help us to meet our needs for future health care providers. Uh, it's a very minimal fiscal impact, I think about 250000 under the fiscal note. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm on page three, modified structured House Bill 1008. What it does is amends the law to authorize the Georgia Student Finance Authority to create nonprofit corporations and clarify that the authority and the student commission are authorized to solicit and accept funds. It also changes the board from 13 to 14 to um, make it work with the congressional districts. Ms. Abrams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Chairwoman. What would be the purpose of these nonprofit corporations? Well, the purpose is that many corporations that are foundations are not really interested in giving money to a state agency, which is what it currently is, but by providing this corporation, there it's a 501c3, and these foundations are willing to donate money to that. And the money will go towards needs-based aid for students, for scholarships. Thank you. Next one. 
Yeah, next. Uh, the next one is House Bill 1007. It's the best friend of 1008 because what it does is creates a checkoff to allow taxpayers to contribute money to this corporation on their um, state income tax form. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of the committee. I bring to you House Bill 1006, which is on page one under modified open rule. Uh, this is an education bill that would allow school districts to waive seat time for students who complete an online course. What's currently happening is a student who finishes an online course in the middle of or, or towards the end of a semester, if they finish it, they have to essentially sit in the classroom. Um, so this would allow them, allow the district to waive the seat time and allow them to move on to the next course, as well as allow the state to administer that end of course assessment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Harrell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Top of page four, structured rule. House Bill 954, um, it would establish that um, appraisers when valuing um, low and moderate income affordable housing projects that have the Georgia housing tax credit take into consideration uh, the factor that there are rent controls on those properties. Any questions? Thank you. Mr. Wilkerson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I bring to you for your consideration at the bottom of page two, House Bill 914. This would uh, increase the communication between DFACs and our school counselors when it comes to mandatory reporting of child abuse. Uh, it has the support of both DFACs as well as our school counselors. And what it would require is two things. When suspected child abuse happens and it's reported to the state, DFACs would have to respond within 24 hours uh, saying that they received the report. That's all they say is they re received it. And then after the conclusion of the case, current law says that the counselors can get that information, but it's not being transmitted. So this would make it automatic. Within five business days after the completion of the case, they would get a confirmation back saying whether it was confirmed or unconfirmed. And that way our counselors would know which way to proceed uh, going forward. It came out of committee unanimously. And as I mentioned before, um, it has a support of both DFACs as well as um, our uh, school social workers. Uh, House Bill 914 at the bottom of page two, okay. Okay. and I'd ask for your consideration. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. Uh, I present to you HB 47, first bill on the first page which would simply give the consumer the absolute right to cure their default should they become behind in their mortgage, as is the case in the overwhelming majority of states. I want to say that advocates for and against have come together. This bill hasn't received a no vote in any part of the process. Uh, the fact of the matter is, should you schedule this bill, it's voted out of the House, passed by the Senate, signed, in the governor, signed by the governor, you will no doubt save the homes of constituents in your district. I want to also say that uh, it was well vetted by the Judiciary Committee. Uh, the second sign on that was uh, Chairman uh, Willard. That is correct. This is a prospective legislation. It only, when it takes effect, it will affect those mortgages from that day going forward. It also addresses an issue that our Supreme Court, the Georgia Supreme Court stated, was one of the problems with foreclosure in as much as they deemed it to be, in their words, too quick. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Welch. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, I present to you on page two, uh, seventh item down is HB 138. This has been a bill of uh, working in two sessions. This will limit the use of temporary assistance for needy families, um, otherwise known as um, welfare assistance. For we prohibit the use of that money for um, gambling, uh, pornographic materials, use in a um, adult entertainment establishment, um, liquor stores. Many of these things are these prohibited uses and establishments that are prohibited for uh, accepting TANF money is federal law. It's part of the 2010 Middle Class Tax Relief Act. The states are supposed to put in a uh, system or plan for um, prohibiting the use of this money at these particular establishments. This bill would execute on that uh, federal requirement, and I ask for your favorable consideration. No questions. Never mind. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Ms. Jones. I just had a quick question. It appears this bill has changed a good bit throughout the process. Is that? Could you just? touch on one or two highlights of that? <clears throat> yes, uh, the, the bill um, had requirements for signage to be placed in the, in the uh, front windows of retailers um, and that would notify the public that if they're coming in to utilize a EBT card or what was it now is a debit card that you could not use that for those prohibited uh, purposes. That has been removed now that will only appear on ATMs. So the signage will now only be on ATMs one of the significant changes. In the course of committee meetings is, uh, and Sharon Cooper's committee, uh, Chairman Cooper's committee, last session we cut uh, some of the uses that would be prohibited, such as salons um, and other items that seem to be difficult to administer. Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch, I cannot find the bill in our book, so I, I can't read the current language, but I know there was some concern about food deserts and the fact that this would provide restrictions in communities where they have limited access. Can you speak to that issue? <clears throat> That's a very good question, um, Minority Leader. The, uh, we actually eliminated that provision before you recall the, it had a prohibition on the use of the card at ATMs so that if you couldn't, if you didn't have an ATM location or you couldn't um, ex obtain enough money at a point of sale, then that would have been a problem for many communities. That has since been eliminated. Um, the only thing that it does do is it does ask for a study to be done by the department as to whether or not technology can be used to limit the activity of the cards in the future at ATMs that would be located in any one of the establishments where there would be a prohibited use, such as an adult entertainment establishment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have, have a seat. Your bill is already... One of your bills is on. You can go home. Thank you. See, I saved y'all a lot of misery there having to listen to him. <laughs> okay. I got one. Mr. Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'll bring you House Bill 969. It's on structure, the last page, uh, page four. All that does is do uh, relating to the exemption of sales tax for uh, your community health centers and also for the National Center on uh, Civil and Human Rights Museum. If you've got a question on the bill, raise your hand because you've all lit up on me. All right. Mr. Benton. Any questions, Mr. Mint? Thank you. Mr. St 
Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Page one, uh, two thirds of the way down. H.R. 1038 brought to us by the Textile and Manufacturers Association is asking for the um, acknowledgement of our education into the manufacturing. Page three at the top of the page, HB 927, extends a definition of enterprise zones to five people and a million dollars inventory so cities themselves can um, do their own um, inner city renourishment for businesses there. And Mr. Chairman, I also asked to put my name beside Representative Mayo's House Bill 390, enabling legislation and also Atwood's HB 933. Mr. Setzler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to put my name beside uh, Chairman Rice's HB 671. A lot of work's been done in committee on that bill. And also uh, HB 990 and HB 707 and 47 from Representative Mitchell. Yo, in the end, uh, just, just new stuff. Just new stuff. Mr. Mr. Who? Mr. Weld, your doesn't work. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm asking for a House Bill 831. This bill uh, concludes what we'll call the placing all of our judges in nonpartisan elections. We know we've had several bills even coming through this year dealing with our magistrates and probate judges, all of our other judges from <coughs> Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, <coughs> Superior Court, State Courts are all nonpartisan. This will bring into the full fold all of our judicial officers as being at a nonpartisan basis. <coughs> as your favorite support. Any questions? Ms. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to put my name by uh, Representative Welch's bill is on the second page, House Bill 138, that's on the TANA. And at the bottom of that page, House Bill 914 by Representative Wilkerson, anything we can do to improve communications with NDFAX is a plus. M Mr. Powell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, HB 823, it's on page three under structured rule provides for a sales tax exemption for construction materials used in the construction of a pellet mill, wood pellet mill. A lot of this fuel is going overseas, and so it increases our exports and increases activity at the port. And uh, it's got a limited uh, period of time, two-year window. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, did I understand you say if we had already asked for a bill once, not that don't ask for it. I was just saying, I'll put my name, uh, I'll put on the calendar House Bill 982, Mark Bill, Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I bring uh, two bills to you today, both are structured on the third page, House Bill 671, House Bill 729. House Bill 729. <coughs> is an update to the TAVT law, <clears throat> and basically it uh, does, it does uh, four things. It helps the welcome to Georgia situation in terms of those out-of-state registrations. It uh, helps the leasing people in terms of the, the ability to get a trade-in on the, uh, the, the uh, leased car. It, it helps with the calculation of fair market value with regard to used car by making it book to book and uh, stopping the gaming uh, that's going on there. And the fourth thing it does is to provide for a multi-year Tags so that our people don't have to put those stickers on their car on their licenses every year. Sam, for questions. No questions. What's the other one? House Bill 671. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman came out of the judiciary. It's the result of a uh, study committee uh, on uh, Title 40 reforms 
It has multiple parts to it. The most central part is the change to the DUI law, which requires on a .15 or above uh, mandatory interlock device. In return for that, person is unrestricted in terms of their ability to drive. Help, keeps people in jobs. Mr. Peak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I got two measures before you. First one is on page three, HB 128, uh, creates the Georgia Downtown Renaissance Fund, revolving loan fund, originating low interest loans for uh, investments in the downtown district. Next one. Is, uh, next one is uh, uh, really kind of simple little bill, um, HB 885, the medical cannabis legislation. Um, it's, uh, I won't spend a lot of time on it unless you like to, but it's very strict, tightly reg regulated, managed by doctors, limited only to seizure disorders, allowed only in oral or pill form. Um, the vice chair said that was a housekeeping measure. It should flow housekeeping. right through. That's correct. That's correct. Yes, sir. I'll stand for questions if there are any. Mr. Powell. Uh, other Mr. Powell. Mr. Lindsay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to ask for House Bill 964. It's a bill that simply uh, promotes businesses uh, to go into partnership and assist public schools, in particular charter schools. Any questions? Ms. Ms. Abrams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to ask for HB 390. Representative Ron Mayo's bill, HB 1006, Representative Morgan's bill, HB 914, Representative Wilkerson's bill, and HB 47, Representative Mitchell's bill. 390. 390, 1006, 914. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. My apologies. Okay. Uh, 914, which is on page two at the bottom. Okay and 47, which is the first bill on page one. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the last page, last three bills, H.R. 1200 and H.R. 1544, both are the road naming bills. One of them is the H.R. 1200 is the troopers, and H.R. 1544 is the other one. And then H.R. 1573 is just a joint study committee on transportation infrastructure funding. Mr. Smyrie. Mr. Chairman, on the committee, I'd like to request uh, House Bill uh, 1080, um, which provides for a placement of a statue on the Capitol grounds for Dr. King. Questions? Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to put my name besides Chairman Parsons Bill HB 348. Thank you. Ms. Jones, you got anything? You have. I just didn't get anything else. Mr. Hamilton, you back on? Mr. Golett.
Mr. Gullick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pursuant to Rule 33.3, I'd like to move that debate be limited to one hour, no more than one hour for all legislation to be considered on the House floor on this day 30. Do you have a motion? Time to be apportioned by the Speaker equally. Sorry. All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed will get out of here at 12 o'clock. <laughs> you ain't got nothing else to do from 11.30 to 12. <laughs> Mine does too, but. <laughs> I will see y'all a little bit later on. <laughs>